So it doesn't look like we are going downtown tonight. That person that called me for the storage unit wasted my time completely. I went to the storage unit, waited. No call, nothing. Now the number's blocked. So whatever happened, they either don't have the money, didn't have the money, car, whatever it is, they're not coming. Lou, I called Lou. Well, actually, Lou called me, said that he ordered the parts. Parts won't be in until Friday. I was under the impression the parts were already all ordered. So, um, even, it doesn't matter, he, he's been helpful, right? He's paying me. Um, the parts won't be in until Friday, so I won't be fixing that car till the weekend, next weekend. I gotta do computer work. In order for me to charge that laptop, work on it and everything, I gotta buy a coffee at Starbucks. Which leaves me with no money whatsoever. Also no money to eat or money to put in gas, which I just wasted gas going to the storage unit thinking I'm getting 350 bucks and didn't get it. While I was there though, I grabbed a couple more things and looked for shit, you know, I wanted and fucking got a box. I had a bunch of these fucking, I had a bunch of those, uh, the weed box that got stolen from me. I had a little weed in it. I grabbed another one that I had at the storage unit. I had a shitload of them in that fucking dresser. I like having these to roll. It, it's so much better to use this. Right? Then to bring out that big ass metal thing out of my glove box and all that is just too much. When I can just pull this out, right? Which I had a little jars. So all the Narvono jars, right? I've been saving them. They're in that storage and I was planning on bringing them on the bow. I was gonna use them. That's dead. God has different plans. People ruin plans, right? For you. That's why you don't always want to tell people everything it is you're doing. But you have to in a sense, right? So what do you do? You deal with what comes at you when that stuff comes at you. But I happen to have a little bit of a shake left in those jars. And I went around and emptied them. I have that bud from yesterday and a roach from last night. Which I haven't had any coffee yet. I don't want to go in there and do computer work and drink coffee till I smoke. I won't. I won't get done. Stuff won't get done. And I got to stay off this phone and actually do computer work. That's a problem. I, I'll i be programming and whatnot, and I can't get off the phone. I'll be fucking, fucking around doing shit on the phone instead of studying, writing, programming, learning. Most of it's just learning, reading. That's what I'm about to go do. Because I can't do nothing till tomorrow. I can donate tomorrow. That's 35 bucks, right? That's just for tomorrow for food, whatnot, gas, right? I'm going to be here for a couple more weeks still to get this car going, right? I got to have a job. That job doesn't have to know that I'm leaving in a couple weeks, right? I'm about to go to this place over here called Airtime, this trampoline park. 
for the kids or whatever and fucking see if I can get a job just fucking cleaning, you know, 10, you know, 15 bucks an hour type shit, 12 bucks an hour, um, a couple hours a day, you know, part time, whatever it is. I got to keep busy, keep me busy in a way to put money in my pocket, right? I can't drive this car delivering right now until I replace the throwout bearing. And if I open up the trans to replace the throwout bearing, I might as well replace the clutch and, and, you know, resurface the flywheel or get a new one, whatnot, you know, all that stuff. So I got to get a bunch of money together, right? I got to do that before I leave. I got to change up that transmission. I got to clean up that transmission, right? Renew it, replace what needs to be replaced before I leave. That's the main thing. And I still want to get the lithium battery set up in the back so I can charge my devices on the go. I don't want to have to constantly stop at places like Starbucks and everywhere everywhere else to charge up my devices. It's going to cost more money. It's going to take time, gas, all that. When I can simply have a battery pack that the alternator charges, I can have a solar panel on top of this roof on top of the bike rack along with the cargo. So what this car is getting built for. All that stuff can come off, you know, on track day. I can take the fucking, the, the storage. That's why I'm building a harness, uh, or a disconnect harness, where you can take the storage bin off and everything, and then you're good to go. Back to racing. Back to track day. I plan on taking this car to power tour, all that stuff. I want to take pictures, I'm going to get photos of all the different cars, everything. Y'all have no idea how dedicated I'm about to be. Y'all have never seen anything like this. Y'all will never see anyone like me. There's no one out there like me. God created everyone different. I'm ready to smoke this fatty. That's another thing, I'm going to be out of weed after this too. I'm not working on Lou's car today, so therefore I'm not getting any weed today or money through him. I'm hoping for the storage unit still. Other than that, I'm hibernating for the day. It's Saturday. There's not much I can do. It's Sabbath. I don't want to do much anyways. You're supposed to rest this day. That's what I'm doing. I'm resting. I wanted to rest down in Detroit, downtown. Ain't happening tonight. Not unless someone fucking calls me for all my storage shit. It's the only way we're getting down there. Because Lou's out of the question now. I have no way of getting money through him today. I'm not going to ask him for money. I work for money, right? I mean, I could ask him for 20 bucks. Say, hey, you bought me 20 bucks for food, you know what I mean? So I work on that car to get through the day. But I'll figure it out on my own. Doing this for a reason, to show everyone that it can be dog. There's billions of people every day fighting for food. Can't even eat. And here I am smoking weed. You know what I mean? Bitching about me not having money for the day. And there's people dying, starving, right? And this is what I do, you know? This is what I'm making aware, you know? People people need to wake up. People are dead. Jesus literally said people are dead, spiritually dead. They're not awake. It's because they see with their ideas, their beliefs. They don't see with their heart. And even if they did see with their heart, their heart's corrupt. They're holding on to something, which is usually hate. I'm glad I found this thing. It's not hard to find any of a shitload of them, but... I only bought a couple of pre-rolls, though. I only, I'm talking like I have a shitload of these boxes when I don't. 
I only have a couple of these ones. I only bought the pre-rolls a couple times simply because they had new flavors and they only had them in the pre-roll because they always roll the pre-rolls too tight. And nor do I like the element papers. I only smoke raw. I can't really, like Lou brought out a blunt. Um, it was tough. I did it. It's not that I don't have no problem doing it. I just... I'm a purist. I'd rather... And I, I, I love weed that much. I'd rather enjoy it, smoke it, taste it. That tobacco, I don't care for the tobacco high anymore. It... Plus, it fucks up your lungs. Worse than the marijuana. And I'm already smoking marijuana on top of it. The best way to use marijuana is to ingest it, to eat it, or drink it. It's what they do in Africa. All the older black ladies, all the older, all the older women that tend the fields and whatnot, they don't smoke marijuana. Why would they smoke their own supply? They grow it and sell it, but they'll tell you whenever they're sick. They have a really bad chest cold or something. They'll make a tonic. With the marijuana. And they'll drink it. And it will get rid of that chest pain where it hurts, you know. When you cough and it's painful, you can't even breathe. This takes that pain away right here. It, it, it soothes it. It calms it down, all that which I've never actually had a full marijuana drink and they're really uh, common in India. I want I want to go to India and try them. But they smoke their marijuana different as well. So the Indians, you know, in, in India, not all of them, but the flower, they don't, they don't smoke the flower. They leave the plant there. They do this to the plant. They get all the crystals, the resins off the plant stuck to their hand. Then they scrape it with the stick. They scrape it off. And they put it in the bowl and smoke it. Very fresh. Very fresh. Check out Strain Hunters. One of my favorite YouTube channels. They got the marijuana game on lock. They were doing the shit in the 90s. When marijuana was illegal here in the United States. They're from Amsterdam. So they got a whole. They're decades ahead of us. When it comes to the cannabis industry. And because of their channel, they have also inspired me to do what it is I'm doing, will be doing. Dude, I'm telling you, I probably ate a thousand Tootsie Rolls in the last week. That's bad. I can't stop. I'm too good. This guy switched my IMEI number for me. But I think he accidentally changed my PIN code to log in to my account. Which is going to fuck me over. I hope he didn't do it on purpose. Got major problems. I can't pay my phone bill. 
and that person switched the pin on me. We're in major fucking problems. It ain't gonna be for me. Gotta open the tip up more. Fucking listen to music, my favorite song, one of them, Amy Winehouse, Back to Black. Wish she was still here. Out of all the music artists, when it comes to females, Amy Winehouse is the one person that I relate to the most when it comes to addiction and relationships. That whole song, Back to Black. If anybody can tell me what she's meaning by Back to Black, comment, tell me. Comment below. Let people know what it is they think it is. Oh yeah, she's got a nice airflow. She's got a nice flow, let me tell you. There's only one flow that I want. And that's Mago, which means magician. I got a king lighter so I can smoke my king crack. I, I don't smoke crack, I smoke green crack and that wind I don't wanna you don't wanna fucking run that paper you wanna get the weed burning you know so we gotta hibernate all day today for the most part I don't really have a choice Unless I somehow make some money. Crazy to me. What am I working at the trampoline park anyways? I love kids. I'd be able to climb on all that shit, go on the fucking ball pen, all that stuff. So strange sometimes. I mean, I am the fucking dumbass over here smoking marijuana in public in my car at Starbucks, among many other places. Qdoba, Mexican Grill, Northwest Nails and Spa, AT and T, which is your best cell phone network, technically. On a technical basis, AT&T owns the highest frequencies. They, the frequencies travel the farthest. But Verizon definitely has more towers than AT&T. That's why they get better service. I shouldn't say better service. That's why they have the better coverage. The 
this is that crud. A little bit of that. The Rona shit. That press was just bitching about me. Everyone fucking smokes weed now. Fucking stupid. Everyone's smoking weed now. Stupid. Yep, I'm stupid. All right. I bet you any more. I'm more intelligent than you. But I'm stupid. We're smoking marijuana. That brings me pain relief. That isn't killing my liver or my kidneys like ibuprofen or any of those NSAIDs. I guarantee this cock-sucking faggot right here that's bitching about me smoking weed is eating ibuprofen and all these other things every time they have pain. I guarantee this cock-sucking faggot over here goes and drinks on the weekend. Probably every weekend. And then probably fucks a bunch of fucking lowlifes, gets tagged themselves. They got a U of M sticker on their car, so they're from U of M, University of Michigan, so you know. So sick of people, man. Over here judging me, thinking I'm a piece of shit. Oh, potheads are a piece of shit. It's not cool to them, that's why. Well, guess what? You're not cool to me. So I hate people. I hate it. I'm so sick of it. So sick of it. If it wasn't for Jesus, I would literally, I would want to get out and just run over them, just beat the fuck out of them. Just because. Just because. Why can't people just be happy, man? Answer that for me. I know why. It's because I'm not born of the Spirit. They don't have Jesus living in their heart. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So the return of the 72, we read that one. Jesus rejoices in the Father's will. We read that. where we left uh, the parable of the good Samaritan it says behold a lawyer stood up to put him to the test to put Jesus to the test as he was speaking remember he was speaking to the prophets telling them that to be cheerful to be happy that you know they're blessed they're they're part of salvation you know their their name their story is going to be right on it's going to be forever right it's eternal So it says, teacher, they stood up to, you know, the lawyer stood up to Jesus saying, teacher, rabbi, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live eternally, forever. But he, the lawyer, desiring to justify himself, his behavior, right, is he had a conscience. He knew he did wrong. That's why he was asking, how do I inherit eternal life?
He said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by a chance, it says, Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Is this a priest, by the way? Didn't even do anything for this man. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. The Levites, the Samaritans, the Jews, they all hated the Samaritans. The Samaritans were the worst of the worst, like scum. You know how they talk about how, you know, Mexicans are, you know, the labor people and, you know, black people don't do nothing and white people fucking own the world and control everything. And the Asians, they, they, they know the only thing they know how to do is produce everything and then destroy everything, pollute everything. It's all stereotypical. You got all these ideas, beliefs, and justifications on why you would do something and why you wouldn't do it. And here is these people, right? This guy just got beaten to death, right? They have no reason to not help this man. And they aren't. Same as my family. They have no reason to do what it is that they have done to me and to Margarita. Same with her family. Among many other things. But here it is. A person, right? That I don't like. That I don't even care about. Going out of the way. People I don't even know. Going out of the way to help me. All the time. Lou, Alex, Bill helped me a lot. And so his mom and his sisters controlled the situation. And that truck got pushed out. So I really should say that Bill didn't push my truck out. It was his mom and sisters that did that bullshit. They manipulated and fucked with Bill's head and because Bill takes care of his mom and the sisters can't he don't have nowhere to go he wanted to help me and here he is getting shit on by me and his mom and pushing my truck out all because of ideas beliefs justifications instead of just simply Helping out of the kindness of the heart. These women fucked me over and fucked Bill over. How was Bill fucked over? Bill could be doing anything that he wants to do. Instead, he's taking care of his piece of shit mom that manipulates and controls everything. His sisters can't even take care of his mom. It blows my mind, man. It does. That this person, the Samaritan that had, is not even supposed to come near a Jew or a person that has anything to do other than them. That's what they're taught. They were taught to hate each other. There's countries that are taught to hate America, the United States of America. There's propaganda on their television every day, cartoons played every day to portray our country as being evil. People manipulate control all the time. Agenda. That's why I don't watch the news 
if I do watch anything, I'm going to pick a topic. I'm going to sort through all the bullshit and figure out what is true to myself. God will let me know if it's true or not. I don't have to ask this person if that is true or not. I can come to God with it. I don't come to anybody for anything anymore. Because every time I have, I've been taken advantage of. Things have been taken from me. Or I never get to use my intelligence. Or somebody puts me in a place where I don't get to flourish. They, they suck the life out of me. They don't want me to flourish. Because they're afraid that I'm better than them. Because I am. Why am I better than them? Because I gave my life to Jesus. Because I opened up my heart. That's what makes me better than those that do not. Because I go out of my way to open the door for everyone. Man or woman. I go out of my way to make people laugh and be kind. All my money goes to other people. I don't give a fuck. I will be homeless. I'm in my car homeless now. Most of my money, I give it away. If I don't spend it on food to take care of myself, it gets put back out to people. Whether I give it to them or I buy them something or I do something for them, all money, every bit of money I get is God's purpose, not mine. I take what I need. I need this. This allows me to do this for you, for all of you. This does many things for people. And it doesn't hurt people. It's the evil one that is hurting people. Just so everyone knows. I'm tired of the bullshit. I'm tired of fucking people not using their brain or thinking. So, dude, every single person, American, comes up with the same, says the same fucking thing. My family forced Christian material down my throat. No, oh, the fuck they didn't. Shut the fuck up. It's bullshit. I couldn't tell you how many people say that to me. And I know they're bullshit. You want to know how I know they're bullshit? Because I used to say the same motherfucking thing. <laughs> it's funny, right? People will tell other people they're stupid, right? And we all know that we're stupid. But as soon as it comes to somebody having to glorify themselves and make themselves look good in front of others to try to be better, right? Whatever it is, better clothes, whatever. They will sit there and argue and argue and argue and create all this ignorance, evil, to glorify themselves when they know the full shit. crazy that the Samaritan had compassion. He went to him, bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, brought him to a motel, took care of him. The next morning, the next day, he went to the motel, the innkeeper, the manager, and asked, will you take care of him? 
And whatever more that you need, what you spend on this man, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? The lawyer, he said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Remember, he was a lawyer. He manipulated all types of things. He would lie to get people that did wrong. He would take people's money that did wrong and get them out of trouble and lie to make them look good. People, they do it all the time. I've had many criminal lawyers. There goes my phone freezing up. But people do it all the time, you know. I've had many criminal lawyers, you know. I've lied and done stupid shit. The third time, this last time, I didn't pay for it anymore. I didn't do anything. I wanted to be in prison. I did. I put myself in prison on purpose. That's what's funny. People don't understand that. I knew if I wasn't going to go to prison, if I wouldn't have been in prison, I would end up dead. I knew it. I seen it. I was having visions of it. God was telling me then, before I had a full-blown relationship with them. It's crazy to me to tell everyone this, and it's the truth. Did I want to go? No. Of course, who wants to go? I prolonged it as long as I could. I didn't literally go out of my way and go, I'm going to go to prison today. No. I consciously knew every day what I was doing. And I was doing it on purpose, knowing that I was going to get in trouble. I wanted to get in trouble. I wanted to get away from my family and get away from the streets. I already did time before at boot camp. I've been around already. I've done and seen so many things. I knew by being up in there, I'd have no responsibilities other than myself, take care of myself. I knew they would provide three meals a day for me. Give me a bed to sleep. I knew I would be able to think, figure out what it is I wanted to do, work out all that stuff, make a plan, all that stuff. I knew I couldn't do that at home. I have to feed myself every day. Nobody was feeding me. I would have to go work a job or go do stupid stuff. I thought about this constantly, 24-7. So therefore, when I did get in trouble and led into the situation I led officers into. I'm thankful for it. Best thing that ever happened to me. It 
it also busting that happened to a lot of other people too in in there. A lot of people came home. God used used the situation to fulfill his purpose, which is to heal people. Love people. Yeah, so that next day, you know, he took out two denarii. He gave the to the innkeeper. He gave money to the innkeeper to prove to him that he had money, you know. And said, I will give you more when I come back. It's crazy. So it says, Martha and Mary. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him to her house. So Martha welcomed Jesus into the home. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. So here is Jesus sitting in a chair in this woman's house. Everybody sitting on the floor Indian style. Content, just waiting for words to come out of his mouth. Because they were so intrigued on what came out this man's mouth. Everything that came out this man's mouth had purpose, had meaning. And so does mine. So does every YouTube video I do. Every single hashtag that I do has meaning. Whether it's me just messing around, playing around, or, you know, having fun, or it's serious. Whether you will understand that now, when you read it, or understand that later, that's up for you and God to figure out, as for me as well, when I learn things. You think Jesus just knew everything? Why do you think he took so much time to spend with God and go out to the woods and do all those things so he could learn? He studied nature. God is in everything. So if you study the world and study nature, you're studying God. Everything that we do, we're studying, we're studying God. Makes sense, don't it? So Mary, you know, said at the Lord's feet, listen to the teaching. Martha was distracted with much. She was serving, you know, food, you know, cleaning up the house, trying to help everyone, you know, serve everyone. She felt a certain way about the situation because here is Martha, right? Welcoming Jesus into the home among many others, right? His disciples are with him as well, right? Martha sits down, right? Mary has the idea that she has to tend to these people, right? No, Martha, I'm sorry. Mary is the one that sat down. Mary sat down. Martha was the one that was distracted. Martha was the one that welcomed them into the house, right? She was the busybody, right? Mary was Mary was her sister. She was the one that sat at the Lord's feet. My bad. It says, but Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all this work by myself and serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Because she knew that her sister wouldn't listen to her anyway. She wanted to use Jesus' authority to get her sister to do what it is that she wants. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled 
about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. He was saying that the meals, the physical food that she's worried about providing, is nothing compared to the portion of spiritual food, spiritual healing that she is getting sitting at the foot of Jesus' mouth, which he understood that. So therefore he rebuked her and told her, go do what it is that you worry about anyways, because you're going to worry about your stupid life anyways. No matter what I say, you're going to be that person, and I won't allow it. You're not going to steal this child from me. That's what he's saying. It had many meanings. So yeah, Mary, you know, Mary got to understand and hear Jesus, which my phone might be freezing up. It's kind of running slow. Which tells me I should go get, uh, and wake up and do computer stuff. Um, 11, which I got to hibernate today, right? It's Sabbath. We're going to be coming back, right back to chapter 11 in a couple hours and uh, continue reading throughout the day. I would like to actually finish Luke and get into another study, another chapter today. That's what I plan on doing. I really want to just spend time studying with all of you. I just got to go get this uh, operating system installed. So, which I wanted to show you guys that as well. But it might not be good footage if it's choppy. How you doing? I don't smoke cigarettes, sir. No, I quit. I smoke marijuana. That's why you thought. you. That's what you thought. Appreciate you. Yeah, that's why you thought I had a cigarette. Let's smoke a pot. Yeah, I'm going to go. Chapter 11. I'll see y'all then.